Hello and welcome to SafetyWise Aviation channel where we dive deep into aviation safety to uncover the systems that keep us flying through the skies. So today we are exploring safety management systems. We are going to discuss what they are, why they matter to us, and how they are transforming aviation safety worldwide. I am your host, Mohammed. All right, let's begin. In the world of aviation, safety isn't just a priority, it is a way of life. Now, every flight is a testament of the countless hours of preparation, meticulous planning, and unwavering commitment to ensuring that everyone reaches their destination safely. But how do we make this happen? The answer lies in having a robust safety management system, or SMS. So what is an SMS? An SMS is a structured, proactive approach to man managing safety risks. Think of it as a living, breathing framework that integrates safety into every level of an organization, from the chief executive officer's office down to the hangar floor. In other words, Safety management system is a standardized approach to controlling risks across an entire organization that promotes the sharing of safety data and safety best practices. As we shall discuss later in this presentation, SMS requires crafting a safety policy, calculating and controlling the risks involved, measuring how everything is working, and then communicating the findings to all employees within an organization. Now for better efficiency, every aviation organization must build safety into every activity as an integral part of every employee's job responsibility. After all, safety is a team effort. The management of safety is not a new concept and safety management as a practice has existed since the birth of aviation in one way or the other. Therefore, SMS is mainly a formal and standardized framework of best practices for running a safety program centered around business and scientific processes. Now, the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, defines SMS as a systematic approach to managing safety, including the necessary organizational structures, accountabilities, policies, and procedures. Now, SMS applies to aviation service providers also, and this includes airlines, airports, and air traffic control. So what exactly does the ICAO SMS framework involve? It is built on four components, and each component plays a vital role to the success of the system. The first component is safety policy and objectives, and this component sets the stage by defining the management commitment, making the right safety appointments, and committing resources to the safety in the organization. The second component is safety risk management and safety risk management deals with identifying hazards, assessing the risks involved and then implementing controls for these hazards. No organization or program will succeed without good quality assurance. Therefore, the third SMS component is safety assurance and this monitors and measures how well the safety initiatives are working within the organization. The last component of the SMS framework is safety promotion. Safety promotion inculcates the building of safety culture through training, communications, and awareness within the organization. Now, each of the components is broken down into elements, as we shall see in this segment of the presentation. Now, the first is safety policy and objectives. Now, this SMS uh, component focuses on creating an environment where safety management can be effective. It is founded on a safety policy and objectives that is set out by management's commitment to safety, its goals and supporting organizational structure. Now, management commitment and responsibility, the first element, it means the safety policy should be visibly endorsed by senior management and accountable executive. Now, visible endorsement refers to making management's active support of the safety policy visible to the rest of the organization. Now, the safety policy should make reference to the safety reporting system to encourage the reporting of safety issues and inform personnel of the disciplinary policy applied in the case of safety events or safety issues that are reported. 
Now, the next element is safety accountabilities. Now, this means that the ac accountable executive, which is typically the chief executive officer of the organization, has the ultimate responsibility and authority over the safe operation of the organization. Now, the accountable executive establishes and promotes the safety policy and safety objectives that instill safety as a core value in the organization. Now, the next element is appointment of key safety personnel. And this has to do with appointment of a person or persons that fulfill the role of safety manager. Now, this is essential in every organization for the SMS to become effective. The next element is coordination of emergency response planning. And as the name suggests, this refers to planning for activities that take place within a limited period of time during an unplanned or operational emergency situation. Uh, emergency response plan is an integral part and component of an SMS. And this has to be well planned ahead of time before any emergency happens. Now, the fifth element under the safety policy and objectives is SMS documentation. Of course, we have to write whatever we do. So this includes the inculcation of a safety management system manual, which describes the organization's SMS policies, processes, procedures, and other areas that will facilitate the organization's internal administration, communication, and maintenance of the safety management system. Now, under safety risk management, the first element is hazard identification. Now, safety risk management process is a process that systematically identifies hazards that exist within the context of the delivery of the product within the organization. Hazards may be the result of systems that are deficient in their design, technical function, human interface or interactions with other processes and systems. Now, hazard identification is the first step in the safety risk management process. The next step is the safety risk assessment and mitigation. Once safety risks have been assessed, the service provider will engage in a data-driven decision-making process to determine what safety controls are needed. Now, safety performance monitoring and measurement is the first element under safety assurance, and this is conducted through the collection of safety data and safety information from a variety of sources that are typically available within the organization. Now, data availability to support the decision-making process is one of the most important aspects of the safety management system. Now, the next element is management of change. Now, aviation organizations experience changes due to a number of factors, including but not limited to organizational expansion or contraction, business improvements that impact safety. Now, this may result in changes to internal systems, processes, or procedures that support the safe delivery of product and services. Now, changes to the organization's operating environment could also be a reason for a proper management of change. You could also have changes to the SMS interfaces with external organizations. There could also be external regulatory changes that could impose some decisions on the organization that may require management of change. There could also be economic challenges or also emerging, emerging risks within the operating environment that could arise. So management of change is very, very important as far as safety management systems uh, is concerned. The third element under safety assurance is the continuous improvement of the SMS. Now, the service provider should uh, monitor and assess the SMS process to maintain or, continu or continuously improve the overall effectiveness uh, of the system. So continuous improvement is, is very, very important in an SMS. Now, the first element under safety promotion is safety training and education. Now, as the name suggests, the service provider shall develop and maintain a safety training program that ensures that personnel are trained and competence is maintained to uh, perform SMS duties. So this requires that the scope of uh, the safety program be appropriate to each individual's involvement in the SMS. So everyone needs to be trained commensurate to his duties within the organization and within the SMS. 
Now the last element under safety promotion is safety communications. And safety communications, as the name suggests, means that the organization should communicate the SMS objectives and procedures to all personnel that are involved in maintenance of the SMS. Now there should be a communication strategy that enables a safety communication to be delivered to the most appropriate through the most appropriate method that will get to the individuals within the organization. Now these communications may be through newsletters, notices, bulletins, it could also be through briefings or training courses. Now the safety manager should ensure that lessons learned from investigations and case studies or experiences both internally and from other organizations are distributed widely within the organization. Now in subsequent episodes, we shall dive deeper into each of these components and their elements to see how they function within an aviation organization. Now here's the thing about safety. While SMS is very important and requires investment, the cost of neglecting an SMS can be catastrophic. Now the champions of safety see their expenditures as investments to prevent future catastrophes. As safety professionals often say, safety may be expensive, but it is nowhere as expensive as the lack of safety. Now a company's managers may sometimes be tempted to put production ahead of protection and profits at the expense of safety. Occasionally, this will have disastrous consequences. Therefore, organizations must strike a balance where safety is treated as a core business function and not a competing priority. So therefore, the best approach is a balanced allocation of resources where safety management is a core business function of the organization, of course, but it has to be closely intertwined with business objectives and not in competition with the profit aspects of the business. Now, the idea is being able to detect or predict potential hazards and prevent accidents before they happen, thereby protecting lives and properties. Now, these principles together create a safety culture that prioritizes prevention over reaction. Now, the tragic accidents in aviation's past remind us of the cost of oversight. Hence, investigations often reveal systematic issues like gaps in communications, gaps in training, or even gaps in risk assessment. Now, these lessons have driven the evolution of modern safety frameworks, culminating in the adoption of an SMS. Now, this channel is also dedicated to accident case studies. Please check out one of these videos about the crash at Teterboro Airport in which poor safety management system was a contributory factor. I leave the link in the description below. Now, these accidents necessitated two ways of anticipating and preventing accidents before they occur, creating a shift from reactive to proactive safety approach. So a reactive approach is where actions are taken after incidents have already occurred, investigations have been conducted and recommendations have been made. However, a proactive approach is where the risks are identified and managed before incidents occur. So for example, a safety audit could be conducted and then based on the findings of the safety audits, actions are being taken to prevent accidents from happening. So the International Civil Aviation Organization recognized the need for this shift to proactive safety approach in the, due to the complexity of the modern day aviation systems. Now, having recognized this interdependence, various components within the aviation sector, ICAO took a major step to consolidate safety standards into a single comprehensive framework, which allows a higher degree of integration of safety management functions. Now, this consolidation was made in the form of ICAO Annex 19. Now, Annex 19 was developed in two phases. Uh, the first phase was to streamline the existing safety management guidelines uh, in, by improving clarity and standardization across the ICAO annexes. And this was uh, developed in 2013 and became applicable that year. Now, the second phase was completed in 2018, and this elevated the SMS components to the standard level and emphasized the protection of safety data, which is critical for proactive safety management. Now, this newly adopted amendment to Annex 19 was effective in 2019. Now, although SMS is being mandated by most aviation governing authorities in most countries, 
SMS is not just about compliance, it is about the culture. SMS empowers teams to identify risk, report issues without fear and collaborate to develop lasting solutions. Now this proactive approach is why aviation remains one of the safest modes of transportation we have today. So today SMS is becoming a global standard and this has made aviation to become safer, more reliable and more proactive. And the future focus will be towards ensuring that the aviation industry is better prepared and equipped to manage evolving risks. Now this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I do hope that we have learned something within this talk and in subsequent modules we are going to look into each of these SMS components and their elements. Thank you, remain safe and goodbye.